There you go. Okay. Here we are again, ladies, once again, coming to study um, the Beatitudes. And uh, I, I just want to take this time to just greet you and to just, I pray that you have had a wonderful Resurrection Sunday. I personally missed my children. I missed this whole thing about getting together on Sunday and barbecue, you know. I miss that. But we have to do what we have to do to stay safe. So I pray that you guys are, are keeping up with cleansing your hands, your face, and doing all that good stuff. I pray that you're taking this time to be with your family, with your honeys, and um, do some cleaning like I do, and, you know, catch up with everything. So I pray that you're doing that. And until we get announcements that we're coming back, so far we haven't heard anything, so we're, doing, we're continuing to do this. But I wanted to ask you to pray for me because this is real awkward for me and I really am kind of struggling a little bit with it. So I want you to pray for me because the enemy can come and tell me a whole lot of things. And um, I just, I, I think I want to, you know, let you know that we're doing this poor pastor. He comes over here, sets up everything and we have such a neat pastor. He does all this for us. Uh, for the women's ministry and, and you know we're just blessed with him um, so pray for us pray for us leaders that are trying to keep the gospel going uh, in spite of what is happening around us so pray for us and I would like to take this time to pray uh, so that we can start our, our lesson Heavenly Father I just give you all the glory and the honor my precious Lord and Savior how wonderful you are how majestic you are Oh, precious Lord, I pray that you come, Father. Pray that your Holy Spirit will be here and teach us. That your Holy Spirit will speak to the innermost of our beings and speak to us and show us and guide us and lead us because these are the end times and we want to do what is the right thing to do. We want to do what is right. And Father, especially your church, the body, is so lukewarm, Lord. But we want to be enlightened, awakened. We want a fire to sit in within us so that we can be, so that we, Father, can be the light in the world, Father. And how will the world know, Lord, that we are yours if we love one another? So Father, as we continue with the Beatitudes and you continue through your Holy Spirit to teach us and show us what it is that you want us to do and how it is that you want us to comport our lives so that we can display your son's character through us, Jesus through us. Oh, Father, let us walk in his humbleness. Let us walk, Lord, uh, with selflessness, Lord. Let us, let us, Father, mourn, Father, for the, for the condition and the state of the world. Father. You're coming. You're coming. Who are you going to find to stand? You're coming. So, Father, I pray that uh, you will continue, Father, with, with um, your Holy Spirit leading us. Holy Spirit, this is our time with you. This is our time with you. You teach us. You speak to us. Speak to our hearts. Speak to those that are hearing every word that comes out of your word, uh, comes out of your eternal word. Everything will pass away, but your word will remain. Oh, Holy Spirit, forgive us all our sins. Forgive us all our sins. Purify us. Purify our hearts. Give us pure hearts. Let your anointing be here. Let your anointing be in every person that is hearing. Every person. Everyone. Whether male or female. I give you all the glory and the honor. Take your place here. Teach us. Remove me. Forgive me of all my sins and remove me. And you speak. You speak and say what you want us to know and what you want us to hear. We give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen and Amen. Okay, well, let's see what Father God, through His Spirit, has for us. We are continuing 
Continuing to study the Beatitudes in the Sermon of the Mount. The Sermon of the Mount is a teaching that Jesus taught his disciples in the early stage of his ministry. He started with a group of blessings called the Beatitudes. These are a specific group of attitudes a true follower of Christ must exhibit in their lives. These Beatitudes are given in a manner of precept upon precept. What is precept, you say? Precept is a general rule intended to regulate thought and behavior. That's what precept means. It means that it's a general rule intended to regulate thought and behavior. So it's like the Beatitudes. This one is regulated for the thought and the behavior of, of mourning. Mourning is regulated for the thought and the behavior that produces meekness. Meekness is regulated for the thought and the behavior to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And that's the way it goes. Precept upon precept. What is the difference between attitude and behavior? There's a difference between attitude and behavior. What is the difference? Well, let me show you. Where did I go? Oh, here it goes. Let me show you. Oh, I'm going to need a... Uh, let's pretend... Okay, here we go. This is our core. The core of who we are. The center of who we are. And the center of who we are holds our beliefs. It holds our values. It holds our morals. All that is in the center of who we are. But that will produce attitude. That will produce attitude. The, what our beliefs and what we believe in, what we stand for, all that produces our attitude. And attitude produces behavior. It produces our behavior. So the way that your, what your beliefs are produces your attitude. If you believe, if you're always believing on the negative, your attitude will be negative. Because it produces what your core is. Experts say that attitude is what you think, whereas behavior is what you do. In other words, it can be said that attitude has to do with the mind, whereas behavior has a lot to do with actions. Attitude is thought-oriented, whereas behavior is action-oriented. They are like a coin that has two different sides. It's one coin and it has a head side and a tail side. Well, attitude and behavior are like that. One is the attitude, and the attitude gives the behavior, the behavior. So it's like a coin, a head and tails. So attitude is the standpoint or stance one has towards something or someone. And behavior is the way which one acts or conducts oneself, especially towards other. It's action. Attitude is influenced by environment, experiences, and moral values. Behavior is influenced by the attitude, remember there too. The character traits, the biological factors in endorsement and nervous response. Attitude can be primarily negative and positive. Behavior can be innate or learned. It can be uh, something that you're born with, that you have in, inherited, or you can learn it. You can learn a behavior. A child will learn a behavior from their parents. If there is a, a if the male figure or the dad of the, of the home is always angry and, and frustrated, the child will pick up on that and the child will grow up being angry and frustrated too because it is learned. Behavior can be learned. It can be inherited. 
some people are, are nervous by nature. They're always nervous. They can inherit that. It's in the genes. Maybe their mother or an aunt or somebody will have that same personality. Behavior can be inherited. Attitude results in the thinking process and the behavior of a person. Whatever you're thinking, that produces your, the way you behave. Result, um, behavior results in the reflection of a person's character and attitudes. So they're both together. They do different things, but they're in the same. You can't separate them. It stands to reason that a positive uh, attitude produces a positive behavior and a negative attitude will produce a negative behavior. We have studied six Beatitudes. Poor in spirit, when Christ follower or believer is emptied of being self-centered. She or he can be trusted then with the kingdom of God. Why? Because you're not thinking of self, you're thinking of others. So Father says here, you can take care of the kingdom now because you're no longer thinking of yourself. We also studied uh, in the same way a believer that mourns for the loss, of, in the same way that we mourn for the loss of a loved one, the believer must mourn for the sins that they've done and the sins of others. Mourning to make you feel uh, you mourn the condition and the state of the world. You mourn for the sins of the world. You mourn for that. You see everything around you deteriorating. You see the, the kids, you know, um, yell at the parents. You see all this happening. You see unfaithfulness all over. Everything is, the churches are beginning to act like the world now. And everything is changing. Everything is changing around us. We must mourn for the condition of the world. Father says that, that uh, we who are called by his name would humble ourselves in prayer and turn from our wicked ways. Then he will hear from heaven. Remember, he will hear from God. He will hear from heaven. And he will heal the land. We must mourn the condition of this world. We must mourn the condition of even the believers. They're half in and they're half out. They, they, we, we, we come over here to the churches and we pray and this and that, and then we go home and we live like the world. There's no distinguishing a believer and a non-believer because we're the same now. Because why? We haven't had the desire and hunger and thirst to follow righteousness the way that we're supposed to. So we mourn. We mourn. And what is the reward for mourning? When we mourn and we're praying, what are we doing? We are talking to Father and the Comforter comes and comforts us. That's beautiful. Mourning takes us to a relationship with our Father. It bends our knees for prayer. And what happens? The Comforter comes and comforts. They will have fellowship. When a believer controls his or her emotions for the sake of another, he walks in meekness. In meekness. Meekness is controlled power. You may have in your disposal the answer to an argument. You may have in your disposal the means to take care of certain things, but in doing so, others will get hurt. So you hold back and you take what is coming. Even though it's unjust, you take it anyway. That is meekness. When you're thinking of others before you, and you will be punished for someone else. Who does that remind you of? Jesus. What greater example than Jesus? And Jesus says that when you walk in meekness, when you walk in that self-control, when you walk in that state of caring for others, then the earth is ours. He says, what should the meek inherit? They shall inherit the earth. Why? Because we can take care of it. Because we are going to be too busy caring for those and that we're not going to be 
thinking of ourselves. We can be trusted with the things of the earth. Father, trust them with the earth and all that is in it. And then we studied hunger and thirst for righteousness. This fervent craving, this desire, it's a deep seeking, a passion. A passion for Father's kingdom and his righteousness. A longing for a true relationship with the Lord and others. Listen to what I'm saying with the Lord and others. We have no problem having a relationship with the Father. We have no problem having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We have no problem praying to Jesus. We have no problem in that area. The area we have problems with is with one another. There we have problems. In that area, we definitely have problems. So we need to seek each other. We need to love each other just as we love Christ. We need to love each other. And we need to cultivate and work on our relationships with each other. How is the world going to know that we belong to him? How is the world going to know? By the way that we love one another. That's how the world's going to know. A longing for a true relationship with the Lord and others. Their souls would be completely satisfied. That's what the reward is. That our souls would be completely satisfied. When we hunger and thirst for righteousness, when we hunger for what is right in the sight of our Father, when we hunger and thirst and we go after what He tells us that is right and true, when we do that, when we hunger for righteousness, He says, we shall be satisfied. When you're hungry and you're thirsty and you haven't eaten, say after a fast. Because I know that after a fast, sometimes I'm counting the seconds I'm waiting.